Hello YouTube, this is the truth man, giving you the truth. And this is Sunday sermon number two. Sunday sermon number two. I'm coming. <coughs> Excuse me. My text that I want to come from is found in Mark chapter seven. Mark chapter seven. And it's dealing with basically religious people and their traditions, how the Messiah corrected them in regards to their traditions because they really didn't understand what defiles a man. Kind of like people today. You got people today in certain faiths that still condemn people for what they eat. And I want you to know, as the prophet, you don't have to believe in that I'm a prophet or not, but I'm going to tell you firsthand that what you eat does not matter, and I'm going to show you in the scripture. I'm going to show you in the scripture. Let's go to it. Mark, and I got it on here, so you won't think that I'm making stuff up. Now, you hear me take out the word Lord. And words like that, I don't, I try not to really use, but yeah, let's get to it. So it says that they were having a discussion about washing their hands. And over here in Mark chapter seven, as you can see, it says, then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him. Having come from Jerusalem, you ever notice how religious people, when you get deep and when you know something, they always try to correct you and challenge you and follow you around and try to tangle you up instead of being like a team. That's what people do. This is how you, this is one of the trademarks if a person is just merely religious and a person is actually a disciple. See, when you're a disciple, you're going to get comfortable with the Most High. And that's kind of what happened here. The people who thought they were the answer, they weren't even really comfortable with the Most High like that. Look, look, look at the text. It says, Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. See? Kind of like what people do with the lottery. Kind of like what people do with wine and beer. It says, For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding to the tradition, hold, holding the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat <clears throat> unless they wash. And there are many other things that which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, cup, copper vessels, and couches. <clears throat> Look at verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Look what he told them. Look what he told them. See, this is important because too many people are guilty of this and I'm telling you the most I is tired of it. You say you so saved, you keep your traditions, but your sex life ain't saved. Your, your attitude ain't saved. You still think you better than people of other skin tones. He answered and said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You know, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One minute. Then at night, I'm married. Oh, 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 oh. Mouth, but this, that. Verse 7. It says, and in vain they worship me. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And that's what people do today. The Bible tells us what sin is. The Bible tells us 
basically in plain language what the requirements of the Most High are. But people still teach as doctrines their own commandments. You shall not gamble. You shall not watch horror movies. You shall not do this. You shall not do that. Remember what he said, and we, we finna get over there to it, and I'm gonna give you the title of this. He said, for laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men. See, they lay aside the commandments of God. You shall have no other graven images. And they hold the traditions of men, celebrating Christmas. You see what I'm talking about? The washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. He said to them, all too well you reject the commandment of God. How many preachers that got caught up in adultery? You know what adultery is, right? It's when you have sex with people that you are not committed to in marriage. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corban, that is a gift to God, and you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother, making the word of God of no effect. Through your tradition, which you have handed down. See, it's a lot of handed down stuff in these churches. It ain't the, it ain't the word of God. It's just handed down stuff. It says, and many such things you do. When he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing, look at the key word, nothing, that enters a man from outside which can defile him. Let me say that again. Because some of y'all don't watch some stuff I done said, and you don't get it. There is nothing, nothing, nothing in this world. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Don't let the devil fool you. See, the devil wants you to be a traditional believer. It's not saying you do this, do that, because we're going to get to that too. There enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then it says in verse 17, when he had a, entered the house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. See, you've got to be a disciple to ask the deeper things. See, that's why some of y'all don't know nothing. You're too busy chasing people. You've got to be a disciple. He said, unless you carry your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. And that's what the Most High is telling you in regards to himself he said it says so he said to them are you thus without understanding also see they was worried about them people looking at them like they were saying you can't worry about that if it's something that the most high has not condemned you for that you do you need to focus on what he said and learning what his expectation is. He said, do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him because it enters into his stuff? His, it, it says, because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach and is eliminated, thus purifying all fools. Now he's talking about fools, but he used some words, nothing, and whatever that I want to emphasize on, and I would entitle this, it's what you do. It's what you do. It's not what you see. It's not what you hear. It's what you do. And the real believers, your act of worship is rejecting things. Rejecting things that you know about. Evil things that you know about. Forget about grace. You don't use grace as a reason to, to do things that you know will defile you once you do them. 
I'm under grace. Oh, I can't lose salvation. Yes, you can. Keep playing with them. Keep playing with them. See, it's not, see, as you can see the disciples, when you're a disciple, you're going to be more comfortable with them. You're going to be able to do certain things. Like he said, you go in and out and find green pasture. But that's not a reason to play. You still want to live righteously according to his standard, not people's standard. See, sometimes it's going to be stuff you say, well, I'm, I'm finna going to do this. Because like he said, what comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, and murders. See, once that lust comes in, whatever it is, the Most High is expecting his people to kill it. See, that's what carrying your cross is. You don't go around doing everything. You don't commit adultery. You don't, you're supposed to honor your mother and father. Like, if your mother get to yelling at you, I don't care if she is a crackhead. You're still supposed to show her respect. You're still supposed to, no matter what mistakes she make, you want her to do right. You're still supposed to, if you got the means, you're supposed to provide for your parents. They're supposed to provide for you, you're supposed to provide for them. That's the he said the Pharisees wasn't doing that, but they want to focus on whether or not people washing their hand. That remind me of people now. They don't even be helping their kids, but yet they want to focus on who uh, smoke cigarettes and who drink beer and who watch horror movies and who go to the casino. But they don't even be helping their family and their kid. They throw, throw their mother in the nursing home. That's what he's talking about. He said, again, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit. Your kids still in cars. Stop talking about they good. They still in cars because they're not guarding their heart. They trying to chase other people who steal cars and now they still in cars. So stop talking about your kids as good kids. What is your kids doing overall? What is their mindset towards God overall? Are they trying to be like the worldly people or are they trying to be like the Bible people? Which one? Because what is what you do? Out of the heart come thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye. You wonder why these girls wearing these, this, these clothes? Like, it's not a law against yoga pants, but they wearing yoga pants because of what's within them. They haven't guarded their heart. Now they want to say, look, in their mind, they say, look at my booty. And then when people look at it, now they want to pretend like they're righteous. Why do you keep looking at me? Just like these guys, these guys, they want, they got to have certain cars and they got to have a certain motorcycle with the loudest speakers because they haven't guarded their hearts. It's not because they want it. They want other people to see it and be attracted to them. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things come from within and defile a man. It's what you do. Now let's go. And that paper in the background, that's just some of my notes. So I want to go to Revelation, and we're going to close this out in a few minutes. Revelation chapter 22. This Sunday sermon. Contactless righteousness. Contactless Bible verses. You just come subscribe. And I'm going to give you a sermon every Sunday, if possible. So let's look at something that was said in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his what? What he saw? No. What he heard? No. What he ate? Whether or not he ate bacon? No. Everyone according to his work. See, work usually 
is connected with skill. So that's what he's talking about. Whatever you learn to do, you're going to be judged by it. Again, let me say that again. Whatever you learn to do, you're going to be judged by it. Verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments. His commandments. Not your pastor, not your grandmother, not your uncle, not those people that wear suits and try to act like they're so sanctimonious because they go to church seven days a week. But his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside our dogs, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, he's in a better place. No, he's not. Wasn't he killing people? Wasn't he robbing people? Didn't he die stealing? No, he's not. Stop lying. You want to believe all your kids and grandkids is in a better place and they are not. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and, and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whatsoever loves and practices a lie. See? Practices a lie. None of that going on. Oh, if you get this, oh, you, you know, you're going to keep people safe from you. You're going to keep yourself safe. Uh, never mind what's in it. We ain't going to tell you what's in it. Just do it. Because we said it. We rich. Just do what we say. Just do what we say. Whatever enters a man from the outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart but his stomach and is eliminated thus produce purifying all foods. Like I said, I want to emphasize on that whatever. When you see something, it goes into your eyes, not your heart. When you hear something, it goes into your ears, not your heart. Here is where God is worshipped in spirit and in truth, and he sent me to tell you this, that you live in an evil world, and he's not going to take all the evil away. He wants you to take away the evil based on what his commandments say, what his word truly says. And you, your act of devotion is to come to him and to learn his word. Let him teach you his word. You control what gets down in your spirit. When you love and respect the most high, you will guard your heart. Mark 7 and 19, again, what comes out of a man does not, that defiles a man. Not what goes in, but what comes out is what you do. We have to filter ourselves out of a voluntary love and respect for the most high. You're going to see things, hear things, and say things. But what you do will save and lose your soul. What you do, if you already saved, will lead to chastisement from God or future reward. And if you think, I'm under grace, so I can do evil, 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 evil. You can't, you have to be sexual in the way that he said, or he's going to judge you and cast you out. You see it right here. The sexually in the world. You're supposed to be who he created you to be. That's your sexuality. What he created you to be. It says, not that what goes in, but that what comes out. And if you consistently do evil, you think because you went to you would you put on your little stockings and went to church when you was eight, that that's enough to save your soul when you 88. 38, 48, nah, nah. See, I know some of you, I know what you're doing, I know what you're thinking in your mind. You are deceived by demons. And I can't say everything that I would say on, on YouTube. I can't. But y'all yeah, see what I'm saying. You get where I'm going with this. That's why I went to this. For outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral. Sexually immoral is, what does the Bible say was okay? What did the Bible say was not okay? There are no exceptions. So if you do otherwise, especially habitually and consistently, 
You already know where you stand. But outside are dogs and the sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers. You talking about you a shooter? You done shot people and got away with it? You ain't never repented of that? You ain't never got forgiven for that? And idolaters and whatsoever loves and practice a lie. Y'all love LeBron James and these people of this world more than God. It's okay to be a fan, but it's not okay to put that above God because it becomes idolatry. He said, you shall have no other gods before me. And on that, I'm closing. It's Sunday Sermon 2. Title is, It's What You Do. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you can get more of these. You don't, listen, I'm going to bring the church to you. I'm going to bring it to you. Thanks for watching.